church today, this morning, amen, and you know, I, I, I don't never want to lose the opportunity, amen, to be, you know, in his presence, amen, but it's his name, it's his name that gives us the power, the strength, and everything that, you know, we can endure, especially through these processes, what's going on, amen, but this morning, I want to go ahead and lift up this service unto the Lord, amen, and, and just join me in prayer right now as we just set the atmosphere, amen, set our hearts so we can be ready to receive what the word of God that is going to be ministered. But if we all bow our heads tonight or this morning, dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, this morning, Father God, once again, Father God, for your presence, Father God. Right now, Lord, we just welcome you in, Father God, in our minds, Father God, in our souls and in our spirit, Father God. Let us be able to receive, Father God, what you have prepared for us today, Lord Jesus. But today, Lord, we want to continue to give you the glory and honor. And in Jesus' mighty name, the church says, amen. amen and amen. Hallelujah. Let's give it up for Jesus. Amen. Getting a chair right now. How's everybody doing this morning? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Um. You know, just, you know, again, you know, it's a, another day, you know, an awesome day to be, thank you, to be in the presence of the Lord, amen. Um, for those that know, I have a sciatic nerve that, man, it just kills me. But anyways, I'm not going to let the enemy stop me, you know, with that. But, um, you know, right now, before we get started with this morning's service, you know, um, I want to still continue to lift up, you know, our, our, our founder, you know, Pastor Ruben Reyna and his family, Pastor Estella, you know, she's still in, in the in the hospital and, and, you know, you know, there was a prayer request, but I believe that we, as long as we continue to keep praying, amen, God is going to continue to move, amen, but right now this morning, you know, I, I want to just lift up this prayer, you know, request onto him right now, and if we can all bow our heads this uh this morning and just join me in this prayer dear heavenly father right now father god we put up pastor stella father god in your hands right now father god you know father god that you are the healer father god and we truly believe father god that when you come father god you will heal father god any circumstance father god wherever it is that pastor stella needs that healing process father god we all come together this morning father god believing father god through your power father god your power of your word father god we continue to lift up the Reyna family, Father God, Pastor Ruben Reyna, and all the family, Father God, the children, Father God, every single one of them, Lord. And I believe, Father God, for a powerful miracle, Father God, that it's going to take place, Lord, because you're the one that always gets the glory, Father God. And we rebuke, Father God, any kind of lies of the enemy, Father God, that is always coming and attack, Father God. We give them no authority, Father God. But through it all, Lord Jesus, this morning, we want to continue to give it the praise, the honor, in the mighty glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Let's give it up for Jesus this morning. Amen. Oh, man. I need to sometimes stand church because, you know, I, I want to get in it. Amen. I don't just like to talk about it. You know, I want to be in it. Amen. And that's what it is with the word of God, you know. Uh, some of us, you know, we, we got to understand, you know, that what is important into your life? It, it, is it the things of God or or is it still being in, stuck in the in the worldly values, you know, in life? You know, um, you know, there's there's commitment, you know, commitment that we all have. And we got to understand that there's a commitment that we got to remain standing strong, you know, especially right now through the circumstances that are going on. You know, you either going to get right or uh, I'm going to tell you, you're going to get left. Amen. Yeah. That's straight out. There's no in between. Um, you can't just serve God with a half heart. God wants you all the way. And, and like I always share, you know, you're going to get what you what you put in. If you want to put in a little, you're going to get a little. You know, hopefully it's enough. But if you put in nothing, you ain't getting nothing, amen? And that's what you got to understand. So whatever you put in is what you're going to get. But right now in these times, you know, it should be times that we need to be waking up and not falling asleep. Tell your neighbor, you need to wake up. Wake up amen. What's going on? Wake up. Stop, you know, being asleep. 
And that's the thing, you know, they uh, I just started a new series on Stay Strong. We talked about it on Wednesday. We need to stay strong in the course. How many of us know that we've been called for a purpose here in this world? And the purpose is not to satisfy our own selfish ways, our own selfish desire. No, it's not. God put us here for a purpose. That's why we're here. But how many of us know that we're on this course, but we always have that adversary that always wants to derail us and take us off course? How many believe that this morning? Amen. Am I talking to the right church today, this morning? But uh, I'm, I'm going to tell you like this. That's how the enemy works. He wants to always take us off course, amen? That's what is planned. That's why they call him the father of lies. But this morning, I'm going to continue, you know, to, to, to go on, 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 on standing, stay strong, amen? But not in the course today. I want to see... Stay strong and stand firm. The first one was stay strong in the course, part one. And today we're going to stay strong and stand firm. Are you with me this morning? Amen. Amen. I'm not going to take too long of your time, but just long enough. The, the word of God can impact our lives. Amen. But we've been talking about it in Ephesians. Amen. And Ephesians 6.10 through uh, today. I'm going to go 6.10 through 18. And how many of us know that Paul, Paul's writing the Ephesus church here to give them instructions, you know, how we need to stand, amen? amen. But this, you know, it's in Ephesians 6, 10 through 8 that talks about the armor of God, amen? How many of us know that if we're going to get in this, in this fight and we're going to stay fighting, amen, we got to put that armor of God in our lives, amen? Tell your neighbor, get your armor on, amen? So we talked about on, on Wednesday to be strong, but the, the, well, I'm going to go ahead and start reading the scripture in Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. It says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty powers. Be strong in who? The Lord, it says, not in ourselves. You know, it's not talking about for our power. It's talking finally be strong in the Lord. And in his mighty power. Then it goes on. Put on the full armor of God. So that you can take your stand. Tell your neighbor. You, we got to take a stand. And then it goes against the devil's scheme. You see. One of these schemes. Before I keep going on. We got to understand that we got an adversary. We got an, uh, an, an, an opposer that comes against us. Amen. But it's the devil's scheme that we need to stand strong. Then it goes, because for our struggle, it's not against flesh and blood. Tell your neighbor, it's not against your neighbor. But against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of the dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. You know, as it, when it was talking before I keep going on in the scripture... That from the beginning, you know, God had made man and woman, you know, to live in the heavenly realms where there would have been no death until sin, the darkness came in into the hearts of a human, amen, and then it just destroyed everything. But that was the heavenly realm. So we know that darkness roams around in this world, amen. Then it goes, therefore, put on the full armor of God so when the days of evil come, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand. Stand firm. Then with the belt of truth. Buckle around your waist. Amen. And I'm going to stand right there. I'm going to just stay on that topic today. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father. We just thank you Lord today. This morning Father God. For your word Father God. That you have prepared Father God. Right now, Father God, I pray, Father God, over our minds, Father God, anything, Father God, that is keeping us from your word, Father, that you remove it right now, Lord. Right now, Father God, open up our minds, Father God. Let us be able to attain your word, Father God, that is being ministered today, Lord. But through it all, Lord Jesus, continue to give you the praise, the honor, and the mighty glory. In Jesus' name we say, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Let's give it up for Jesus this morning. So yeah, we talked about staying strong, amen. 
And, and, and we talked about on Wednesday, I, I, I talked about some of the traits that we need if we're going to remain on this course, amen. How many of us know that it's not going to be easy? Tell your neighbor, the course is not going to be easy, amen. But we can withstand and we can stand. Tell your neighbor that today, this morning. You see, we talked about some traits on Wednesday that if we're going to stay strong in the Lord, we have to carry these traits. Number one I had shared with you was confidence. You know, many of us don't have confidence within ourselves. And, and we don't understand. We don't believe that we've been chosen by God. But you got to understand that if you're going to be strong in the Lord, you got to have this confidence. you got to understand who your enemy is. And it's not your neighbor. It's not your wife. It's not your, your friend. It's not whoever's right there beside you. It's not. That's not your enemy. The enemy roams around on this earth. It's a spiritual realm that we're in, that we're fighting, that we need to start getting right. Amen. But there, if there's no confidence in what we're reading, then we don't understand that we've been chosen by God. You see, when there's confidence also, I shared with you guys that we are being called, that we are called and we belong to God. We are no longer timid. Amen. Tell your neighbor, when I'm confident, I'm not timid no more. You see, our confidence is, is in the Lord and not in our own power. So that's what we have to understand that we need to be, if we're going to be strong in the Lord, we need to be confident and understand that we have a call, a position, a position that God has called us. Amen. And then also another, if we're going to be strong in the Lord, I shared with on Wednesday, and I'm just trying to go to, to, if you're going to take notes so that way you can write them down. We got to be settled. Many of us aren't settled, amen. We are, 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 we are, 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 we need to fix our eyes on the Lord. We need to have an establishment within our lives. If we're not being settled, we're always being moved around from here and there, amen. And that's what it is. Our spirit sometimes is not settled, you see. We got to understand he is our anchor and our rock. Amen. We need to be settled. There's no plan B or plan C. Amen. It's only plan A. It's only for him. But when we're settled, we understand that, you know, it's not because I go out to a party or something. I party last night or whatever. No, you know what? When it comes to Jesus, we're going to give it all. He, he wants it all. Tell your neighbor he's going to want it all. He wants all of you, not part of you. Amen. You see, also when you're settled, you become rooted in Jesus. Amen. We are unmovable, ready for anything. Amen. Even when it's under pressure, we don't freak out. Amen. We continue to keep ourselves on course. We keep ourselves with self-control. And then also we talked about, you know, of, of, of the traits in the Lord that, that when we're fully, we will we have full of, we'll be full of joy. The devil tries to steal our joy all the time. The joy of the Lord is our strength, amen. And we need to keep that joy no matter what. But we got to understand and recognize that the enemy will always come to try to steal that joy from you. I don't know if you've ever been like when you're happy in the morning and someone rubs you the wrong way or says the wrong thing. And then, man, it just... You manifest whatever it is. You get robbed of your joy. You got to understand that if we're going to be strong in the Lord, we got to keep joyful and peaceful. Paul says, call it all joy in all circumstances. Amen. Yeah. And then also I talked on Wednesday that if we're going to be strong in the Lord, we can never quit. You see, quitting shouldn't be even in our vocabulary. Amen. Quitting should never be an option. Jesus never quit on us, so we should never quit on him. Amen. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. But let's keep going on. But today we understand what staying strong means that we got to stay strong in the course. But today also we got to stay strong and stand firm. Amen. Means standing firm without being moved by any circumstance, anything that comes our way. You see, the definition of standing firm is to stand up. Or offer resistance to somebody or something. Amen. We need to stand. Amen. What is another definition for stand? It's like to hunker up. Amen. Hunker down. Hold stubbornly to a position. 
You know, the enemy is always trying to rob us from our position and everything, trying to deceive us in our minds. But that's why we're talking about today that we need to stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around our waist. Tell your neighbor, the belt of truth is going to be buckled around my waist today, this morning. Amen. And then also we need to stand not on our own strength, but on God's promises in his word and in his power and might. In other words, we need to choose to fight back. Amen. Many of us right now are, you know, are, you know, through circumstances in life, things that are going on. You know, we're not standing up. We're weakening down. You know, that we should be, like I said, you know, if you belong to this church, you know, we should be live streaming right now, sharing, you know, having watch parties, whatever, you know, being committed. But that's what's happening little by little. The enemy's just trying to take everything away that God is trying to do. But I'm going to tell you like this, church, not today, not here, amen. We're going to continue to fight back, amen. We're not going to allow that enemy to come and try to take what, you know, God has given us, amen. As a matter of fact, we're here to start taking back what the enemy has stole from our lives. Amen. Could I get an amen this morning? Amen. You see, tell your neighbor this morning, God has prepared us uh, to stand you see, we can stand on his word because God's word, word will never pass away. Tell your neighbor, we can stand in God's word because his word will never pass away. Amen. From the beginning, he said, let there be light. And there was light. It's God's word. Amen. It's God's word that's given us life. Amen. It's God's word that gives us the promises. Amen. That as believers that we need to continue to stand on. Amen. And Matthew 24, 35 says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Amen. So we stand on God's word. Tell your neighbor, we need to stand on God's word. And then we, many of us ask, why do we stand on God's word? Because God's word is true. Amen. It is inspired by him. 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness. Amen. But it's God's word. Tell your neighbor, it's God's word, not our words. Amen. And John 17.17 17 says, sanctify, by, sanctify, sanctify them by the truth of your words is truth. And in 2 Samuel also says, For you are God, our servant Lord. Your words are truth. And you have promised these good things for to your servant. We got to understand that if we're going to stand, we got to stand in the truth of what God has given us. Amen. You see, God has given us an armor to fight with. The armor is to help us take our stand. Tell your neighbor, how many are ready to put the armor on? Amen. How many are ready with me this morning? Amen. Amen. You see in 2 Corinthians 6, 7 says, The word of truth by the power of God, by the armor of the righteousness on the right hand and on the left. Amen. You know, God is power. Amen. So let's talk about a little bit about the belt of truth. Amen. In Ephesians 6, 14, what we've been reading. Says the belt has a purpose. Tell your neighbor the belt has a purpose. Amen. It's not for decoration. Tell your neighbor it's not for decoration. The belt has a purpose. Amen. It's to hold your pants up. Amen. You see with the belly in place. It shows readiness. This morning are you ready? Are you ready for what God has for your life? Are you being prepared? You got to understand that no, some of us aren't, you know, you know, we got to understand that the truth, it's the truth about, it's the first part of the armor that it says, because the belt is what ties everything together. Amen. You see the truth, the truth, everything stems from the truth. Amen. Meaning the vine, the vine is Jesus. Biblical definition of truth teaches truth is that which is consistent with the mind, will, character, glory, 
of and being of a being of God. Amen. So we got to understand that, that our truth should be, you know, with the stem within life. Amen. Which is the vine, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm sorry, guys, about my leg, man. But I, I got to get get into it. You see, the vine, the vine is Jesus. So our belief, our passion should stem from the truth. It should stem from the vine. We should be having that sap that's flowing from the vine, amen, getting into our lives. You see, our principles, our values should be based on the word of God that is truth, amen. Not our own understanding, not our own will. Uh, what is it, uh, uh, John, or what is it, Proverbs 3, 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and stop leaning on our own understanding, amen. But we got to understand also in John 15, 5 says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Amen. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Tell your neighbor, without God, we cannot do nothing. Without Jesus in our life, we cannot do nothing. Amen. And church, I, I, I'm going to tell you like this. You know, I, I've, I've experienced that in my life. I experienced when God was not in it. God has to be in it 110%. That's why I give him the 100 and plus the extra. Because I know I should not be here. But because of God and his truth, amen. I continue to stand on his word. I continue to buckle up, amen. And have to keep going, you know, until when we come home. And that's my purpose is to fulfill what God has called me to do. But you see, without truth, the rest of the armor that it talks in Ephesians becomes ineffective. Tell your neighbor, without truth, without the bow, the rest of the armor becomes ineffective. For those that, that know how the armor uh, of the Roman soldiers used to be, everything tied on to the bow. But that was the main thing. You know, they, 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 they had to put on and everything was to go forward. But that without without uh, without the bout, it would be it be ineffective. Amen? amen. You see, we'll allow our spiritual pants to just fall down. And many of us are walking like that with our spiritual pants down. Hate to say it, but it's true. You see, when our spiritual pants fall down and get, we get easily entangled with the things of the world. Because why? The truth is not, we're not holding on to the truth. You see, without the bout of truth, we get entangled. How many of us know that, you know, when we get entangled, the devil begins to have a course where he can begin to start getting us? How many believe that this morning? You see, when we get entangled, when the bout of truth is not in us, you see, the devil deals in deception. And that's when we, he begins to deceive us, taking us off course. Taking us off of standing firm in what we believe in. You see, his purpose is to do things, to distract us, to get us off what God is doing within our lives. To get us to look at other things besides God, amen. To get us not even to come to, to, to be you know, committed to even say for our tithes and offering. By the way, tomorrow, Monday, we're right here from 5 to 7. We're here if you want to bring your tithes and offering. But what, what does the enemy do? He deceives us. We'll be here at the church from 5 to 7. One more time. That's an extra commercial. But that's what the enemy does. In Revelations 12, 9, it talks like this. First, we got to understand that the devil deals in deception because he's the father of lies. And Revelations 12, 9 says, So the great dragon was cast out that the serpent of old called the devil and Satan who deceives the whole world. Are we being deceived this morning? He was cast to earth and his angels were cast out with him. So we know that he's on this earth. It's in the Bible. It tells us. So we got to understand that he's a deceiver. He's the accuser in the Old Testament. He accused. And now he's over there now trying to just distract us in everything that's taking place. But we got to understand his schemes. 
That's why in Ephesians it talks about the battles not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Amen. Also, the devil deceives through lies. Tell your neighbor, the devil deceives through lies. In our minds, it keeps us unsettled. John 8, 44 says, You are of your father, the devil. And you want to do the desires of your father. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there's no truth in him. Whenever he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own nature. For he is a liar and the father of lies. I don't know about you, but you know, if, if the Bible is telling us that we need to understand, that we need to be aware of his scheme, of his schemes, because you know what? He's really there, guys. He's really there. He's there to, to he has, like I said, a purpose, just like we have a purpose. We got a purpose to rise up, to stand firm, to get ready to fight against all these wiles of the devil. Too many of our family are still lost out there in the world right now through this pandemic that's going on. Some of them are going straight to hell because we're not rising up. We need to start opening up our eyes, church, and understand that this is a real battle. Amen? You see, also... The devil always tells the opposite of the truth. In other words, you know, when we're, you know, standing there and saying, oh, I can't do that. I can't do that. I can't. I, I got to take care of something else, you know, and all that. Believe me, church, what's going to be more important in your life to try to save it right now for, for you to lose it for the rest of your life or to try to lose your life for Jesus so you can have life eternally. You see, the devil will always tell you the opposite of the truth, telling you you can't do it or God doesn't love you. Your sins are too great to be forgiven. You know, my Bible says that all sins, as long as you repent and turn away from them, they're cast away. But also the Bible says that you, God don't get mocked either. So don't keep doing it and doing it and doing it because God is not mocked as well. You see, also, when we understand, without the belt of truth, we get entangled because the devil is the master manipulator. Uh-oh. Tell your neighbor, the devil is a master manipulator. And Isaiah 520 says, Woe to those who call evil good, and good evil, who puts darkness for light. The light of darkness who puts Bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Amen. Tell your neighbor, be careful. You see in Isaiah 59, 15 says, truth is nowhere to be found. And whoever shuns evil becomes a prey. The Lord looked and was displeased that there was no justice. Amen. You see, it is it is truth. That will make you stand against all deceptions. It is the truth that you got to continue to remain standing. Deuteronomy 32 4 says, He is the rock. His work is perfect for all his ways are justice. A God of truth and without injustice, righteousness and upright is he. It is God. Proverbs 35 says, Everything God says is true. And is a shield for all who come to him for safety. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to come to him fully engaged, amen, to stand firm for what he has called me. Amen. And then everybody knows in John 14 says, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. Amen. So another thing is, if we don't get entangled, we got to understand with the truth, the word of truth brings life into our lives. How many want life this morning? Amen. Come on, how many want life this morning? Could I get some emojis up there? Amen. 
You see in John 1, 4 says, In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. You see, God's truth, his word, word will support us this morning. Amen. But let's talk about two lies we fall for. There's going to be two lies that the enemy always uses to make us fall. Amen. How many are ready this morning? Amen. You see, one of the lies that the enemy uses, they will, they will kind of... Get us off course, amen. Get us off course. Get us off our calling. Get us off our position. One of the lies is that everyone has his own truth. Amen. In other words, meaning through our own beliefs, our own perspectives, education on what we see and hear from our own opinions. Amen. This is one of the things that will, we will fall in the lies. Thinking that everyone has his own truth. We believe one thing one day and something completely the next. Amen. Have you ever seen a person like that? They're believing one day, trusting God, and the next day, man, total different. And that's the thing. This is one of the things that the enemy uses. That everyone has his own truth. Like, it's all right, man. No, you're right. And we got to understand that there's no, there's only one way. And we got to continue to move on it. First John 1, 5 through 8 says, This is the message we have heard from him and declares to you, God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. You mean, let me repeat that. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in light as he is the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. Amen. Amen. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive our own selves. And the truth is not in us. Hello, somebody. That's one of the things that will take us away. Another one is do whatever makes you happy. Have you ever heard that one? Do whatever makes you happy. If it feels good, do it. It's your body. You can do as you please. Abortion, drinking, smoking, talking. Tattoos, whatever. You know, do whatever you whatever makes you happy. Follow the path of the least resistance, amen. But truth will always confront sin. We avoid the truth because we're focused to look at ourselves. You see, when we don't want to look at ourselves, that's why we try to uh, avoid the truth, amen. And some of us don't like to look at ourselves because you know. You need a lot of work. Amen. Could I get a clap offering this morning for that? Because I believe that we need that. Amen. Romans 2, 7, 9 says. We're almost done church. But in Romans 2, 7, 9 says. To those. Who by persistent in doing good. Seek glory. Honor and morality. He will give eternal life for those who are self-seeking and who reject the truth. But no, well, let, let me repeat this. It goes, to those who are persistent in doing good. Tell your neighbor, doing good, we got to do good. And seek glory. Amen. In Jesus, honor and morality. He will give eternal life. In other words, you know, we need to learn to honor him. His body, his sacrifice, what he did for our lives. Yeah. But then it goes on in verse 8. But for those who are self-seeking and who reject the truth and follow evil, there will be wrath and anger. There will be trouble and distress for every human being who does evil. First for the Jews, then for the Gentiles. That's in Romans 2, 7, 9. Amen. And then now... 
I'm going to just give a few things that we're going to be talking about on Wednesday. But I'm going to go ahead and go on. So if we're going to stand firm, we got to understand, we got to stand firm with the belt of truth. Amen. What will the truth do? Number one, the truth will align us with God. If you're aligned with God and the spirit of God, especially, you know, being aligned with the spirit, you'll understand it. You'll begin to see things. You'll begin to see things in the, in, 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 in the spiritual realm and you'll be able to discern certain areas and things that are taking place. And you'll understand where the spiritual warfare will come. But as us, as Christians, as believers, we need to get on our knees. We need to start praying and understand that there, we need to be aligned with the spirit of God. Amen. And stop being around, aligned with the spirit of the world. And that's what it is. John 8, 832 says, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Amen. If we're not understanding the truth then there's something going on in our nugget. Amen. And we need to align ourselves with God. Maybe because we're not aligning our lives with God. That's why we can never come and, and produce some good fruit that should be producing from our lives. You see, we're called, we're called, you know, we're called to make an impact in this world from this dark world that is taking place. We're called so we can be able to minister the gospel and the good news to give people hope. Hope people that are out there dying right now, going to hell. We're supposed to be making that impact to draw people to the Lord. But if we're not standing firm in the truth, then we're just compromising, amen? But we need to understand that the truth will align us with God. Amen. John 17, 17 says, sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. Tell your neighbor, it's not my word. It's God's word. Amen. And then for number two. Also, when we're praying. Number two is the Holy Spirit helps you see the truth. If the Spirit of God is in you, and I believe, you know, that He is. Maybe for some of them, it's just probably just living by limbs. But if the Holy Spirit's in you, He'll let you see. John 16, 13 says, whoever, when He, the Spirit of truth, has come, He will guide you into all truth. For He will not speak on His own authority, but whatever He hears... He will speak and he will tell you things to come. You know, you know when we should be doing things that we shouldn't be doing, amen, and we should be doing things that we should be doing. You will know, amen. And number three, when we're living in truth, it will sanctify us. John 17, 9 says, and there's in their sake, I, cons I, I consecrate myself. That they also may be sanctified in truth. Amen. And then one more. We need to obey the truth. If we're going to stand firm. We need to obey. Romans 12. 1 says. Therefore I urge you my brothers and sisters. In view of God's mercy. To offer your bodies. As a living sacrifice. Holy and pleasing to God. This is your true proper worship. Amen. So then, now, church, I'm going to go ahead and end here. And if we can all stand this morning. We got to understand, guys, that if we're going to be doing this, we got to kind of buckle ourselves up, man. We got to buckle up our spiritual pants, man, and stand. The enemy is running out of time. And I'm going to be honest with you, you know, um, you know, all the way things are going on in this world right now, it's a time that even if, if, if our generation don't see it, maybe the generation right behind us is going to see Jesus is coming back. And uh, it's a time that it's not even a time to play no more. It's a time to get right, you know, get right and continue to move this gospel, man. 
this is our life. This is our true life. And if we're not, you know, standing up and understanding, you know, you know, there, there's going to be people beside us, our loved ones, that are not going to make it. Because if it's a, our own selfish ways, our own mindset, because it's not being involved with the things of God. You know, one thing that I can say, you know, me and my family, you know, I'm very dedicated. You know, I have the men's home and I'm always there with them. But, you know, I, I put my whole heart in it. You know, I'm with my wife and everything. And we understand right now we're in a season, man, in a season that we need to be fighting. And, um, you know, the enemy always coming in attack mode. I see it all the time. You use men. You use all different, different aspects. But I'm still there. I'm still fighting. It's like I'm fighting these dark areas, man. Men trying to leave. We have 10 men right now in the home. But, you know, sometimes it's hard to even keep them. So, you know, it's a fight. Not only that, you know, finances. We got finances here at the church. Even though they were closed down, we still got to pay. Who's being faithful in that? Are you fighting with the finances too to keep the doors open when we do have a church to come back to? But you got to understand that. You know, we got the rent for the home. We have certain things, you know, there, there, there are men in this home. There's 10 of them want to come and bless you know i think god you know god has not left them without but god is always blessing them man yeah. and you know that should be in our hearts you know especially if we're from this church that hey you know what we want to take care of our men we want to take care of that they're the, the the root of of the core of this house but if we're all busy doing our own things right now and, and not we lose that whole focus we lose that whole focus like I shared with the men, we just got a, a little young a young guy, 18 years old, out here in the streets, just barely hit the streets. And man, just so grateful, man, this kid. And, and just to have him in our home was a blessing. But you know, but what was I doing? I, I was out there in the darkness till 12 o'clock midnight ministering to this youngster in Fontana twice. But why? And finally he budged and he came in. But, you know, these are the things, you know, that with the light and darkness, that there's real light and there's darkness right now happening. What are we doing about it? Are we rising up? Are we really going to get ready and are standing firm in our faith? Are we truly believing? Are we truly trusting God? Or are we just being moved by anything that comes our way? Well, you know, you'll know where you're at. But I'm going to tell you right now, start tying up that belt. Put that truth of the gospels around you and start becoming a man and woman of God so we can fight this battle against this enemy, amen? There's too many things that the enemy has taken and he's still not stopping, okay? He's not going to stop for you. He's not going to stop for me. But we can still make our stand to fight firm in this battle with our Lord Jesus Christ, amen? And just with that, if we can all bow our heads tonight or this morning and join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for your word today, Father God, this morning, Father God. For those, Father God, that we needed this word, Father God, to impact our lives, Father God. Let us continue, Father God, to put this armor of yours, Father God, on us, Father God. Keep us strong, Father God, in this fight, Father God. When the enemy is coming from the left to the right, Lord, I rebuke that enemy, Father God, on your people, Father God, where he has no authority over them, Father God. But us, Father God, as believers, Father God, we're going to continue to stand firm, Father God, on the ground, Father God, on the ground that you call us to do, Lord, all the way to the end, Father God, until we come home to you, Lord Jesus. But today, this morning, Lord, we want to continue to give you the praise, the honor, and the mighty glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Let's get up for Jesus this morning. And also, just a reminder, tomorrow, if you're going to bring your tithes, you can bring them from 5 to 7 here at Living Word of Upland. Church, it's at 852 Alpine Street, amen. From 5 to 7, we'll be here. God bless you. Have a blessed day this morning. Bye.